guys. So this lesson is going to be a little reminder about how to use your clicker. So I want you to actually go put your dog away right now if they're with you because I don't want them to get confused as they're hearing the sound of the clicker. Um, and we're not really focusing on training them at this moment. We're actually gonna work a little more on your timing skills. So you're also going to need your treat pouch. Hopefully you've got one. If not, you can put some treats in a dish and have those nearby. You're also gonna need your clicker. Um, so go ahead, put your dog away, get those items, and then come on back. So hit pause. All right, so I'm assuming you're back now. Um, just to review, this little device is a communication tool between you and your dog. It's going to help you achieve more precise results in your training than if you were just relying on getting food to your dog as quick as possible. So as you remember, probably from us discussing it, one click equals one treat. That's the rule. And if you click, even if you click at the wrong time, you still gotta give your dog a treat. It's okay, you'll have misfires here and there. It's not gonna set you back too badly. But um, if you get in the habit of over-clicking and not delivering the food, all of a sudden this little communication tool totally loses its value. So you gotta stay with the rules. Okay, so um, the way that you use your hand mechanics when working with the clicker is also very important. So I want you to click, then reach in your pouch to deliver your treat. So most of the time, my students and just any person, we want to be ready. So we tend to start reaching for our treat pouch in anticipation of the dog giving us the correct behavior before we click. So what happens is your dog starts to pay more attention to your reaching hand than to the sound of the clicker. And sometimes if you start reaching before they do the correct behavior, they're going to think that whatever they just did that caused you to reach is what you want, if that makes sense. So a perfect example of this is, let's say you have a dog that gets excited or whiny. Um, I'm thinking of a dog class situation. This happened to me in the past, right? So my dog is whining because they're just frustrated and kind of bored. I start to reach for my treat pouch when my dog is whining because I'm waiting for quiet and I wanna be ready. As soon as he's quiet, I wanna give him a treat. But what I accidentally do is bridge the behavior of the whining. So my dog whines, he sees me reach for my treat pouch and he gets quiet. He's like, oh, that was it, right? She's going for the treat. So it's really important that you mind your timing in that regard. So um, you're going to, what it should look like, okay? You click, then you reach, okay? My cat decided to join us, right? She, she loves the clicker too. All right, so one more time, I return my hand to a neutral position. That could be at your pocket. It could be here holding a leash. I click when I see the right behavior, then I reach, then I deliver the treat, okay? Hand back to a neutral position. So we're gonna do a little practice here. I'm actually going to take a tennis ball. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to bounce this tennis ball and you're going to try to time your click with the second the ball hits the ground, okay? So as soon as the ball hits the ground, you're gonna click, reach for your treat and drop it on the table or put it in a dish or whatever, you know, just, your dog's not around so it doesn't really matter. Just put the treat, treat on the table. Okay, and then I'm gonna try to get a little bit tricky with it so you gotta think fast. This is hand-eye coordination stuff. All right, so standing back here, here we go, ready? You're ready to click when this ball hits the floor. <laughs> My cat's like, what are you doing? You getting it? So most of my students at this point, you know when your timing is off. If you click a little late in your brain, you're like, oh shoot, that was late. That's what I need you to know. You don't have to be perfect, but as long as you are learning how to self-correct, then you're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna do a couple more in a row here. A little trickier that time. All right, you probably didn't have time to reach for your treat pouch on that one.
All right. So again, this is just a little timing game. You can practice this at home with your family. So if you have other people working with the dog, kids love this stuff. So you can totally grab a tennis ball and practice your clicker timing, you know, do a little contest. That'll make it kind of fun. Um, and again, this is just getting your skills down so that you're going to be a better, more efficient trainer in the long run. Um, just a silly, silly little game. If you want some more clicker games for your timing, like if you feel like your timing's just still really off, let me know and I can post a couple in the group. Um, all right. So do this little skill practice and then on the next lesson, we'll be teaching your dog something. All right. Take care.